Welcome to Raub in the Malaysian central state of Pahang. Durians have made this area famous. A thorny husk encasing creamy flesh that fans described as pure nectar. And now the distinctive taste has reached a whole new market, more than 3,000 kilometers away. Now, it's no longer business as usual for durian farms in many parts of Malaysia. Now, the industry, from the small holders to the middlemen and the retailers, is evolving fast to meet the booming demand from China. Now, I've come to this plantation in the central state of Pahang to take stock of how changes are affecting a traditional way of life. We also go cross-country to Johor to see how durian farmers there are keeping up with their counterparts in Raub, dubbed the Musangking capital of Malaysia. And then to Shanghai for a taste of durians served up hot and steaming in chicken soup. June 2019 was a pivotal moment for durian markets in Malaysia and China. Frozen whole fruits in the shell shipped for the first time to Chinese consumers after authorities gave the green light. Now, prior to this, only frozen durian pulp and durian paste like these are allowed to be exported to China. But since June this year, frozen whole durian fruit processed by five certified processing plants in Malaysia can be shipped to major cities in China, starting with Beijing, Shanghai and Shenzhen. The Malaysian government expects 1,000 metric tons of frozen whole durians to enter the Chinese market every month, contributing almost 20 million US dollars each year to the country's total exports. In China, there's 1.4 billion people. And it is also said that there are three or 400 million mid income customers. They are all waiting for the best of the durian coming to China. Richie Fu, who heads the China Certification Inspection Company in Malaysia, told me that there's no limit to how much the Chinese market can consume. I got the sense that the more they can eat, the merrier the industry would be. Only grade A fruits weighing no less than 2 kilograms each are chosen for export to China. To sanitize the whole fruit and seal in the freshness, the durians must be frozen in liquid nitrogen at below 100 degrees Celsius within hours after harvest, and each fruit must be kept constantly at 18 degrees while in transit. And once thawed, the durian has to be eaten within a few hours. The taste and the texture, everything are the same. It's only that one is cooler, one is like warm. I decide to head down to the district of Raub in Pahang, central Malaysia. The area is sandwiched between two mountain ranges and is home to the Musang King, a popular durian variant. As I drive down the winding road, dotted with makeshift durian stores, I catch a familiar whiff. Some of the trees are said to be more than a hundred years old, and I'm told that durians from these trees yield more complex and ultimately better flavors. After a two-hour journey, I arrive and meet Caden and Kevin, his business partner. They ventured into durian farming four years ago, anticipating the opening of the Chinese market to hold durians from Malaysia. China has been uh, a big market for durian and for the past 20-30 years they have been eating Thai durian. Uh, the reason why they do not allow Malaysia to export whole fruit, uh, there are a few reasons. Of course, uh, because our different our planting tender is slightly different from Thailand and uh, we do not harvest from the tree, we let it naturally drop by itself. 
While walking through the plantation, I see farming techniques that are new to me, like these ropes securing the fruit to the branches to prevent them from falling to the ground and getting damaged. And this is one way to ensure that durians get a top grade upon export to China. Because in our farm, uh, we have this we call farm price. We have A grade durian, B grade durians. So once the durian falls from the ground, if the durian crack, so it will be auto, uh, automatically categorized as a grade B durian. And hence the price actually go much lower. So in order to protect the yield of the plantation, so we, uh, we will protect our durian from, from crack, uh, from spoil, you know, and things like that. I also found out that every tree now comes with an individual QR code for better plantation management. It's an eye-opener for me how plantations have moved so quickly from the old methods to these new modern ways, as the industry cashes in on China's growing appetite for the Malaysian durian. But it's not always a win-win. I'll show you after the break. As part of my journey to learn how Chinese demand for Malaysian durians is shaking things up for locals, I visited an oil plantation in the district of Raub in Malaysia's central state of Pahang to follow up on what some insiders are saying, that the thorny fruit is quickly edging out the oil palm, seen once as the golden crop in Malaysia's agricultural sector. Now, industry experts believe that inevitably, land set aside for oil palms will make way for durian farming. Now, at the moment, only less than 1% of the oil palm plantations have been converted for durian farming. But that may soon change, especially with the big boys, the plantation giants now jumping on the bandwagon, hoping to make a profit from the search and demand, especially coming from China. This demand for land to grow durians for export has hit Mustafa Along hard. Mustafa is an Orang Asli, a community indigenous to Malaysia. In English, the name means original people. Mustafa is the chairman of the Kelantan Natives Network and is being sued by the developers for setting up blockades in a bid to stop them from clearing forests belonging, he says, to the Orang Asli. He says they want to use this land to farm Musang King, a durian variety hugely popular in China's market. But he has to stop them because their activities are destroying the forests. Mustafa is holding the Kelantan state government responsible for the loggers' activities. Di Malaysia, kerajaan negeri mempunyai keputusan untuk meluluskan tanah-tanah untuk pembalakan, perlombongan atau apa sajalah. Negeri ya? Ha, negeri. Jadi sepatutnya mereka mengetahui ada masyarakat asli yang tinggal di sana. Kami hidup lestari di dalam hutan. Lah. Kami dapat sumber makanan di sana, adat, budaya, tradisi, apa perubatan. Jadi apabila hutan di sekeliling kami itu tadi dimusnahkan, ia memberi kesan kepada kami. Lah. Environmental groups have spoken out about the plight of the orang asli. Five years back, the Orang Asli up in Kuang Musang has already started blockading. They were blockading against de you know, deforestation for plantation of uh, durians. And it's still continuing. We, the people, the urbanites here, we may not know. But the thing is this, the Orang Aslis know, because the forest is, is their world. It's their way of life. It's their supermarket, their land, everything. <laughs> Sofin and scores of others rallied outside Parliament in July and submitted a petition to lawmakers calling for the protection of Malaysia's rainforests and the rights of the Orang Asli. The Orang Asli pun kita tak faham apa-apa pun. Kita faham itu saja pasal hak kita dalam hutan. Sebab itu harbar hutan kita sayang. Pembalakan jangan dimusnahkan. Kita punya hak lah. Ha, tapi kita tak mahu ganti rugi biar dia kerja, dia kerja dia punya pasal lah. Kita, kita tak mahu, kita, kita tak mahu satu seat pun kita tak ambil. Several state governments have banned logging in virgin forests and promised that no more new licenses will be issued. But environmental groups want the federal government to do more. 
we welcome the efforts of Malaysian governments to maintain the existing forest, but at the same time, Malaysian government have a very important role to publish the concessions maps. So that uh, to publish the concession map or land title map will prove that the company, which company are actually involving in the forest destruction. Without federal involvement, green groups say any legal challenge to stop developers may be too little too late. Mustafa says he's worn out by the protracted court battles with the developers, but vows that he will not give up. China's demand for durians is not just stirring things up in Pahang and Kelantan, but also in Johor, which produces the most durians in Malaysia. My colleague Afifa will bring you that story next. <laughs> Tucked away in the quiet village of Kampung Tengah in Johor's Sagama district lies a small farm with a variety of durians you've probably never heard of. This is where Mat Zi, or Pak Hassan, as he's more affectionately known, harvest nearly 20 unique types of durian. Two of those varieties were recently crowned the best durians in all of Johor, more delicious, judges said, than the popular Musang King from Pahang. As a massive durian fan, I knew I had to get a taste of the winning fruit. And so I drove three hours from the state's capital in Johor Bahru to visit Pak Hassan's durian farm. In his younger days, Pak Hassan travelled around the region in search of rare durian seeds. He would bring these seeds home and cross-pollinate them. The 72-year-old says it takes a lot of patience to develop a new breed of durian. Many years can go by before a fruit can reveal what the cross-pollination has achieved. For Pak Hassan, winning the competition is a huge milestone, not only for himself, but for his village. Saya rasa suka lah. Nekmat je lah. Rasa tak ada orang tahu lah. Sebab orang tak alat je tahu. Kita punya suka. The state government shares his joy and hopes the farmer's two prize-winning durian varieties will have flavour and texture enough to rival famous durians from Pahang. The sun has barely risen, but here at Chongcheng Durian Farm in Johor Bahru, the day's work has begun. A farmhand collects durians that have dropped overnight and brings them back to the sorting point. Other workers brush off the dead leaves that stick to the thorny shell and prepare the fruits for sale. Owner Han Sing King spends most of his day here, checking each fruit, inhaling deeply their pungent aroma to determine their quality. Durian farming has been in his family for decades. It takes a lot of hard work and patience to manage a durian orchard like this one, from cultivating the soil to using the right type of fertilizer so the trees will grow strong and healthy. But beyond that, durian farmers also go the extra lengths to filter the durians on the trees so that those they harvest will be the right shape and size. A specialty durian at this farm is the Green Dragon. It's a hit among many of Mr. Han's customers. The name we give, but the variety we found from the kampong. Uh, this is very stable, very unique, and the taste is very good. So he decided to plant a lot of this variety. I think for everyone, also wish to have their own masterpiece. So when they found a new species or created a new species of durian, then can make them famous. This everybody wish to do that. Mr. Han plans to register the Green Dragon with the Department of Agriculture, something the Johor government hopes other durian farmers will follow. This paves the way for official endorsement of a farm's good agricultural practices, meaning its durians are certified fit to be exported to bigger markets like China. But although Johor is the state that produces the most durians in Malaysia, more than 26%, 
It is Bahang which is, for now, the biggest exporter to China. Malaysia's Minister for Agriculture and Agro-Based Industry, Salahuddin Ayub, says his ministry plans to work closely with Johor to boost the growth of its durian sector, so more of the fruit can be exported to China. With exports of palm oil declining, the government has high hopes for durians to fill the gap. Mr. Salahuddin says the prickly fruit is expected to contribute close to 119 million US dollars of Malaysia's total annual exports. I will uh, work hand in hand with the Johor state government to ensure that uh, we need uh, more land to be planted uh, with durian musangking. And also our DOA, uh, Department of Agriculture, will will assist them in terms of initiative, uh, technicality and, and so that uh, they can produce uh, our, premium, our premium quality. As Malaysia revs up its export of durians to China, how are the people there indulging their appetite for the fruit? My colleague Lynette in Shanghai finds out after the break. They say chicken soup is comfort food. But what about durian chicken soup? It's a controversial pairing, one that I'm in no hurry to taste. But I've been tasked by my editors to investigate China's obsession with durians. And so I find myself at this Shanghainese fusion restaurant to speak with Chef Yang Wen and find out why people slurp up 600 pots of his durian chicken soup every month. A pot of this soup, which feeds up to three, sells for 168 yuan or 24 US dollars. Chef Yang told me the chicken soup is boiled for six hours and the fresh durian is added in only in the final hour. My verdict, the concoction was not as strange as I feared and actually quite tasty. China is the world's largest importer of durians, taking in up to 80% of the fruit sold overseas. And here, the thorny fruit is cooked and paired with unexpected ingredients, from hot dogs to crawfish and clay pot chicken. I'm told by restaurateurs that this culinary experimentation is being led by major cities like Shanghai, where eye-catching dishes are paramount in the competitive restaurant scene. Shanghai is a country of the Hainan Bai Fan. There are many cultures that 呃，美食文化，甚至于宗教文化，科技文化，很多东西它呃，上海是上海人是非常具有一个学习的一个精神的，就是说，呃，所以呃，现在现在从目前的中国的市场来看，越来越多的人去接受了榴莲这个口味。
Shen Chong says it's because of their flavor and texture. We basically Eventually, my investigation into the durian craze in China brought me to durian distributors. I learned that because only 1% of China's 1.4 billion people is estimated to have tasted durian, players along Malaysia's durian supply chain farmers, exporters and distributors see the opening up of the Chinese market as a gold mine and more Chinese firms and joint venture companies are jumping on the bandwagon. One of them is Shanghai Grand Durio, a firm run by Gavin Kwok, a Chinese national who fell in love with durians during his time as a university student in Singapore. For China people, in their mind, it's all Thai durian. But after that, after lots of uh, uh, market promotion, people don't know, it, Malaysia durian, uh, is different, totally different from the Thai durian because of uh, the aroma, uh, texture, and also the sweetness. But even though the Chinese market is big, its per capita consumption of durians is still low for now. Industry players say China consumed 200 grams per capita of durian in 2016. Compare this to 3 kilograms per capita for Singapore and a whopping 11 kilograms per capita for Malaysia. Most of the durians the Chinese eat come from Thailand, which got me thinking, why not Malaysia? Experts I spoke to say the answer lies in the traditional way farmers in Malaysia harvest the fruit. Unlike Thai durians, which are plucked from the tree and ripened during transit, Malaysian durians are sent to market only when they ripen and fall, which means they have to be eaten in about two days. Anything after that and the fruit tends to rot. But flash freezing or cryogenic freezing technology has the potential to change all that. Using liquid nitrogen, ripe whole durians once frozen can be stored for up to two years at minus 18 degrees Celsius. But do they taste as good as fresh durians? I bought this whole Musang King durian and defrosted it by leaving it at room temperature for a couple of hours. And it was fairly easy to open. And now for the moment of truth. It's very cold and you can taste the ice bits in there. But other than that, it's exactly like the fresh Musang King durian. With barely any difference between fresh and frozen, industry players believe Malaysian durians can really take off in China, which means consumers in Malaysia and Singapore might have every reason to be concerned about their supply going to the big spending Chinese market. As for me, I put my belief in market forces, that supply will rise to meet demand, and hopefully that means one day, lesser-known durian varieties such as my favourite red prawn can also be found in China. Lynette Lim, CNA, Shanghai.